About a year ago, I reviewed a product from a company called Uperfect that I think a lot of people are still sort of beginning to understand exists. If you look at this, you're probably thinking, this looks like a pretty normal laptop, but it's not a laptop. It is a lap dock, which means it has to be used in conjunction with another device. In this instance, what we have here is a Samsung Galaxy device being used with this lap dock. And when you do this, you get that really cool DeX interface right there on this laptop. Setup, keyboard, trackpad, and it works really quite well. Now, the cool thing about this one is that it actually functions wirelessly and it has a touch screen. So even though it is, a little bit on the pricey side, if you are a big Samsung DeX user, maybe Moto Ready for, same kind of thing, it makes some sense to try and use something like this. You have that synergy, right? So all your apps are on your phone, all your files are on your phone, your workflow is on your phone. You hook this thing up wired or wirelessly, which is really quite cool, to this laptop and you just continue on. Now there are some downsides to using this thing wirelessly. We're gonna be talking about all this stuff here in just a minute because today, we're looking at the, effectively, the big brother of this device. This is the 15.6 inch model. There's some things that are different, some things changed around, and some added bells and whistles on this device. It was just delivered here a few moments ago. I've got it opened up already. We're gonna step back there and take a look and see if we can figure out, if we can determine, is this thing possibly worth the $429 price point that you see there right now? Before I forget, there may be a coupon code in the description down below. So double check there first. So in addition to the lap dock, and we're gonna be cracking that thing open and taking a close look at it here very shortly. We also have a charging brick here, which is USB-C. I'm sure it's C to C charging, but we also have an A to C cable, a couple of USB-C to C cables, and then a mini HDMI to HDMI because this thing is not just a wireless lap dock. For Samsung devices, you can plug whatever you want into it. It's just a screen if you need it to be. So here is the device itself. And the first thing I wanna tell you is, it's pretty heavy. I mean, this, this is a 15.6 inch device, but man, it is very solid. Actually, let's get a weight here. So I can't show you this because it was literally like covering the screen of the scale and it was kind of difficult to film, but it was four and a half pounds, just a little bit shy of four and a half pounds. And a lot of that's because it does have a 10,800 milliamp hour battery and that's gonna be good for powering this screen. But also if you don't wanna do wireless, you can plug your phone into it and it will then be charging your phone as you are using it. On this side here, we have, it looks like a couple of USB-Cs, and then that is the mini HDMI. This one has a little charging icon next to it. Uh, so, duh, that's gonna be for charging. Around this side, we actually have a power button. We have a micro SD reader, we have a USB-A, and then a headphone jack. So that's actually not too bad in terms of a port selection. Let's go ahead and open it up. Do we pass the one finger test? Uh, so far, no, we do not. In fact, this thing's kind of hard to open. My goodness, this is the first time I've ever opened it, and we definitely do not pass the one finger test. Oh well. There are instantly a few things that I think need to be addressed. Let's talk about this layout. So this is one of those weird kind of laptops where there is a trackpad over here next to the keyboard instead of below the keyboard. I will say it's quite large. It feels okay, although this corner here is sinking down lower than this corner here is, I feel like. And there's definitely some deck flex going on there as well. We'll see if we can catch that on camera. Can you see that? Perhaps you can, a little bit of deck flexing going on there. The keyboard itself actually feels really quite good. The key travel is pretty decent. Not super duper loud, but you know, loud enough, a reasonable volume. I think that keyboard is actually gonna be pretty good. Interestingly, they're using a Windows key there for that key. Could you plug like a mini PC into this and turn it into a laptop? I guess maybe you could. There is one really interesting thing that I absolutely have to point out right here, and that is a wireless charging pad, a wireless charging point for your phone. So luckily my Z Fold 4 that I'm gonna be using to demo this is almost dead, it's at 4%. So we're gonna turn this thing on, a little power LED that tells us that it is on, and we're gonna set this on here and see if it begins, there you go, it is 
wirelessly charging. So how about that? That is pretty cool. You can just set the thing down. And that's why the trackpad, everything's moved down. They're making space for this wireless charging. So if we turn this back just a little bit, what you'll see is how you're actually meant to go about connecting this thing. Let me move this lamp out of the way just a little bit. You do this via Bluetooth. So we're gonna go into our Bluetooth settings. And you can see here there are two different Bluetooth things. One says keyboard, and we're going to pair it to that, and that, duh, makes the keyboard function. And the other one is going to be for the touch screen. So we're going to pair it to that one, and that's going to make the touch screen start working. And now to actually start doing DEX on this thing, I think what I have to do, do I go into DEX? There it is, flipbook. It is, oh, nope, something moved. Flipbook. We're going to select that. We're going to hit start now. And here in just a moment, DEX should be up and running. And there you go, we have DEX. Let's reach up and use that touch screen. That is working just fine. There is our trackpad. And this is kind of the first thing that I immediately noticed. With these wireless lap docks, there are two sort of downsides. And let me just kind of, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll zoom in first. Maybe it'll be easy to tell, maybe it won't be, but things just have a slightly like grainy look to them. If I drag this around, again, this is gonna be very hard to capture on screen, but you just, you lose a little bit of like maybe what you would consider to be like the bit rate on the screen because you're doing this stuff wirelessly, right? You also get latency. So it's something that I'm gonna have a hard time showing you. I have to film the trackpad and this at the same time. But what I can perhaps show you is this. So this should be instantaneous. And you can see there's just a little bit of a delay and maybe if I open up this app again and I try to move it around that that will probably illustrate it about as well as I possibly could when you're doing things wirelessly you're gonna have that latency something else I'm also noticing when I'm using the touch screen look at that thing wobble this hinge needs to be much tighter than that as far as I'm concerned because when you're using the touch screen and it's wobbling back and forth like that. The base sustain still, that's moving entirely too much. So that is something that is a definite downside. Let's fire up YouTube and we'll do a quick speaker test because this thing does have a couple of built-in speakers. So listening to those dual two watt speakers, I think that they sound okay. I do wish that they were as big as the grill makes them look. They really are only coming out of right there and right there, but still, they sound okay. The good news is if you're using something like Dex, it's really simple to just toggle back over to your phone speakers if they actually sound better. It might be the case that if you're using something like this Z Fold or like an S24 Ultra, these speakers might sound better, but I will say that these speakers on the lap dock do sound better than they did on the prior model. Obviously that screen is sort of the centerpiece of this device, so we will quickly go through some specifications here. It is, like I said, 15.6 inches. It is a 1080p IPS panel. This is not OLED or anything quite that extravagant. IPS can be fine. We'll have to kind of judge this as we go. They do say that it is a 10 point touch screen. This means it can detect up to 10 points of touch at any given time. I don't know what you're going to be doing with 10 fingers on your screen, but you can if you want to, and you can find software that will support such a behavior. I don't have any way to test this, but they are claiming 100% of the sRGB spectrum. So perhaps you could do some editing inside, you know, the Android version of some photo editing apps with this. There are a few more specifications here and the way that they have this like listed is kind of weird. So just make sure you're looking at the bottom right for these specifications. Apparently this is a 120 hertz screen with a 20 millisecond response time. Both of those are pretty solid. Of course it is 16 by nine, boo, we don't like 16 by nine. 178 degree viewing angle. And then the rest of these are the same across all different models. One interesting thing is that it's the only one that apparently does not have HDR compatibility. So if you're a big HDR fan, that's gonna be a no-go personally. I can't stand HDR, but maybe you like it and that's a deal breaker for you. Now, of course, if your phone of choice does not have a desktop mode, something like my OnePlus Open, you can still go into the screencast options, probably in your quick settings and cast to that device that way. 
Now, of course, the same things hold true. There's going to be some latency and there's going to be a little bit of degradation in that video quality. You also won't have use of the keyboard and the screen, the touchscreen, unless you pair those as independent Bluetooth devices to that device of choice. If you plug the thing in with a USB-C to C cable and your device supports video out, so some Pixel devices are disqualified from this, it's going to work pretty well. The picture is going to look much better and you're going to have that touchscreen and that keyboard and trackpad all functioning with a whole lot less lag in the activities going on on the device. Now, that being said, I was not getting what I would call a perfect experience. As you could probably tell there, that touchscreen was just not as responsive as you would want it to be. Pinching to zoom things would kind of go and then stop. It just never quite felt perfect, but it is something you could absolutely use in a pinch. And it's also interesting to note that this might be a device by device thing because my Steam Deck running Windows seem to behave a little bit better with the touchscreen. So maybe that's coincidental, not really sure what to make of that. So we've moved to plugging the thing in. It'll not only charge faster that way, but it'll also allow me to have a much better picture quality and a lot less latency. If I drag this around now, it's not perfect, but it is considerably better than it was before. And that is uh, definitely good. It's cool to have the wireless capability, but that doesn't mean that it's the best way to go. Things also, like I said, just look a heck of a lot better. You could still set your phone down right there and use it as the speakers, and that's going to work pretty decently. Of course, Samsung decks with your Galaxy smartphone is not the only thing this would work for, right? Anything that's capable of doing display out, in this case, display out over USB-C, like my Steam Deck, which I actually forgot I had <laughs> recently installed uh, Windows onto that's going to work just fine as well you can see here maybe a good reason why that windows key is where it is that's working just fine let's go into my display settings and we should be able to make this look a bit better get rid of these bars here on the side and all right there you go we're running 1920 by 1080 the touch screen is working just fine and this is running off of my steam deck and yes if you're using the regular steam deck os like you didn't do what i did and you didn't install Windows on it, it's gonna work just the same either way. You could then pair a Bluetooth controller to it and play like this on a much larger screen, a, a very high resolution screen, a relatively high resolution screen, I, I should say, compared to your Steam Deck. You've got your speakers there if you wanna to try to use those. And while you're doing all of that, there's no reason why you could not also still be, I assume, charging your smartphone. So that is pretty cool. This thing also does have a 360 hinge. So you could set this thing down in a sort of tent perspective, a tent mode. But rather strangely, not only have they omitted the addition or the inclusion of a gyroscope that allows this thing to automatically rotate, they've also not given you any way to manually rotate this screen. This little rotation lock button does function on other UPerfect docks that I have tested, but on this one, it seems to do nothing. So if you want to use this thing in a tent posture, you're going to have to manually find a way to rotate that image in the device itself, making for me that tent posture almost totally useless. Let's talk about actually charging this device and also it charging your devices. This is a battery bank that I have here and it is currently charging the lap dock. And as you can see, it's charging at about 42, 43 watts. That is not too bad at all. But now we're gonna actually switch the plug from one plug to the other so that rather than this battery bank charging the lap dock, the lap dock is now charging the battery bank. And as you can see, it looks like it tops out around eight watts. So not particularly fast, it should be fast enough to have your device sort of slowly trickling upward as it is plugged in. I will say that if it is a Steam Deck or something like that, that is not likely to be enough power to keep your Steam Deck from draining while you are playing on this screen. So I've taken some time to let my thoughts kind of crystallize a bit, and I think I have my final thoughts on this device. When you talk about the hardware in general, the way I'm kind of thinking about it is, well, if you compare the build quality, to a $430 laptop, how does it compare? And I would say by and large, it's pretty close. Most $430 laptops are gonna have a little bit of deck flex. They're gonna have a hinge that might wobble a little bit. I wish that those things weren't there, especially since they're not having to pack in like a processor and a bunch of RAM and storage. Like you could argue that that means the hardware should be better and it's just not. It's okay, 
it's not the best in the world. But from an ergonomic perspective, when you talk about this device and the fact that the keyboard is forward placed, that did become a problem for me pretty quickly. There just isn't any room to put your wrist down when you're typing. It's the first time I've used a forward placed keyboard like that, and it's probably going to be the last time I'll use one. I just do not like the position. The keyboard itself is quite good. The positioning is not great, and I don't know, maybe they could have found another place to put that wireless charging coil. Maybe you move the keyboard up and you put it like next to the trackpad. Maybe the trackpad's to the right and it's to the left, but then your hand can't sit there to type. I don't know. As soon as they wanted to do this wireless charging thing, they had to do what they did. It's the trade-off that they made. If it's worth it to you, it's worth it to you. I don't think it's worth it for me because the typing experience just became uncomfortable. The trackpad is decent and it's going to depend a lot upon what you're actually using is this a dex device is this a windows device what what exactly is plugged into this thing is going to help determine how good that trackpad is my biggest problem with it is twofold one the texture of it is a little bit like gritty a little bit rough which i really don't like at all and then when you're clicking there's a left and a right click like i showed that right click just feels like it sinks down a little bit it's not the end of the world it's not terrible but it's, I'd say, a pretty middle-of-the-road, pretty meh trackpad. I really have no major complaints about the screen. I think that it looks quite good. I like that it's a touch screen. If you're watching video content on it, it's going to do a pretty darn good job, especially considering that you're probably hooking up a phone or a smaller device. If you're hooking up a smaller device, you know, something like a Nintendo Switch or something like that, you're going to have a much larger screen, and there is definitely utility in this device and I think that that's kind of like where I want to end this at is it worth the $429 I would say for most people no it's absolutely not but this is a very niche device okay who who would this be worth it for well, it's worth it for somebody who doesn't have a laptop, doesn't have a computer, but they do have maybe a Samsung or a Motorola phone that have a desktop interface, and they intend on using that. Maybe they also have a Steam Deck or a Nintendo Switch, and they also intend on using it for that. Maybe they travel a lot, and it kind of simplifies their workflow a bit. Maybe they can pass it back to a kid in the back seat who can then plug in their Switch to it and have a larger screen. You're going to have to get your use out of it. If you intend on using this thing for one thing, it's probably not worth it. If all you're going to do is hook up you know, your phone for Dex and that is it, I don't know if it's worth it for you. But if you're going to use it for a whole bunch of different things, then I think that there is a case to be made there. I do wish that you perfect would work a little bit towards getting these prices down though because it does get kind of hard to justify this because I can go buy a Chromebook or a Windows laptop for less than this and all this is is a battery, a screen. I, I don't know. It just seems like a little bit of, of a high price for where I would think it should be. I do want to say a big thanks to you, Perfect, for sending this lap doc over for me to review. As always, no money has changed hands for the production of this review, and they are seeing this video at the exact same time as you are. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.